the United States has been sponsoring terrorist attacks inside Iran. We like to pretend that we're this innocent child standing here minding our own business, and these nasty Iranians, for no good reason, are just attacking us because they hate us because of our freedom. It's crap. It's a lie. We started more than 14 years ago to support the Mujahideen al Khalq, a terrorist organization. Definition of terrorism, a group that carries out attacks on civilians for a political purpose. That's terrorism. That's what we're sponsoring, and we don't blink an eye about it. And then we engaged in an extrajudicial assassination of General Soleimani, and then turn around and we want to get the vapors and grab our fainting couch because the Iranians allegedly have launched this plot. Except when you start digging into the details of it, not, not a serious plot. You know, Larry, uh, what he said in that clip there uh, is reminiscent of something that I heard Jack Keane say recently, which in, at the time that he said it, and I think we even used it in one of our shows yesterday, we, we thought this is an obvious detachment from where Trump is. But now I'm wondering, is this so off? Here's what Keane said. The global security challenges that we're facing, they are the most serious, the most dangerous, and the most challenging we have had since World War II. And I do believe that we're in a pre-war era leading to global war. That is the status that we're facing. The good news here is, is that all of these adversaries, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, who are cooperating, collaborating, and coordinating together in a degree that exceeded the expectations of all of our intelligence agencies, by the way, and they have been honest about that appraisal, the, the fact of the matter is they have to reassess, Mark, based on this election that's taken place, because they have been ag acting so aggressively, so assertively, because they believe that our leadership in the United States is weak, that we've lost the political will to confront them, much, much less go and fight them. And I'm convinced that President Trump knows that World War III is in the future, as you just described it, and that we have got to take action to restore deterrence in dealing with our adversaries. So he flat out said there that he thinks that Trump, in the, in the first part of that, needs to go after Iran and that war is coming. World War III is coming, so let's go ahead and get ready for it. I mean, to me, that just sounds nonsensical. But then you hear Waltz saying something similar like two days before that about how we need to go after Iran and all, all this kind of stuff. So that, yeah. that gives me some concern. Well, and the Iranians are listening to that, as are the Russians, as are the Chinese, as are the North Koreans. So they've just heard themselves described there as enemies. Now, let's total up the number of military bases that Iran, Russia, China, and North Korea have in other countries around the world where they're spreading their influence. The number is less than 15. I think it's actually less than 10. The United States has got over 700 military bases around the world. At some point, the people of the United States have got to look in the damn mirror and recognize that the international aggressor, the one who's posing the threat to international peace, is us. We're the ones starting wars. We're the ones supplying weapons. We're the one training foreign guerrilla forces, foreign insurgent forces. We're the ones that did it in Syria, as an example. I, I mean, at, at some point, we've, some, we've got to stand up and say it's enough, but my frustration is this, Danny, that in the United States, the majority of people are thinking just like Michael Waltz and just like Jack Keane. The majority, and that includes both members of the House of Representatives on both Republican and Democrat side, as well as in the Senate. Very few voices can stand up and say, wait a second, like what I'm saying. We're the problem. We need to fix ourselves first before we go out trying to fix the world. And you're shouted down, you're shut down, you're, you're punished. And, you know, and, until we surmount that, uh, uh, candidly, the only way it's gonna get the message will get delivered home is we're going to get into one of these wars and we're going to get our rear end handed to us. And then we're going to go, 
wait, I thought we were the best. I thought we were the strongest. I thought, you know, God was on our side. And we're going to find out that no, none of that was true. You know, I, I, I still have some hope because, I mean, Trump ran on and has always been against starting any wars. Uh, he's been pretty outspoken against that. He's definitely talking about in the Russia-Ukraine war, bringing that to a, a speedy end. Uh, and and from, from what I'm told from some, some people on the inside of the uh, the Trump uh, transition team, uh, they tell me candidly that there are some good restrainers and key positions that are coming. We haven't seen them yet. They said, don't worry, they're coming. So hopefully today and maybe even tomorrow, uh, we'll get some, you know, some some people. I, I wish McGregor would be in that mix, but uh, I think he's probably not politically connected enough, unfortunately, even though he would be great for those. Uh, but maybe somebody like Tulsi Gabbard uh, and, and Bridge Colby or something like that, that are much more around getting rid of wars and stopping wars rather than stopping. We'll see how that plays yeah, out. Yeah. But um I, I want to show you uh, Waltz's view on uh, the Russia-Ukraine war and tell me if there's any more optimism for that one. President-elect, President Trump, has been very clear that we need to drive this war to some type of conclusion. Biden never identified f for the country or for the world or even for us internally on the Intelligence Committee. What does success look like? Are, are we going to drive every Russian off of every inch of Ukraine, including Crimea, in perpetuity? You know, blank check is a slogan. That's not a strategy. Uh, and I think President Trump has the leverage and knows how to drive a deal, and especially on the economic side. Uh, that actually enforce the sanctions uh, and unleash American oil and gas. So now that sounds a little bit more like he's talking about, yeah. uh, you know, ending the war. But then that last part, uh, that again, seems like he forgot about BRICS, talking about that, yeah, we can bring all these sanctions on Russia, which has been an, uh, an abysmal failure from the beginning. So I'm not quite as excited about the last part, but what about the first part? Yeah, it, this all revolves around how you see yourself as a nation, how Americans see themselves. And, and Waltz, with his world view, sees us as the, uh, the essential country, the country that nobody can live without, the country that can actually control what others do. I mean, that's how he views the world. And th the failure to understand that, you know what, Russia and China don't see it that way. They got a completely different worldview and the realities of natural resources. Now, think about it this way. In terms of those top 15 countries and, uh, the, the, and their natural resources, uh, roughly 70% of the BRICS or the, the BRICS countries control 70% of those resources. The countries that are aligned with the United States, including like Canada and Australia, they account for about 30%. But just, just from a resource standpoint, BRICS is, is dominant. So the, this notion that we have to deal with everything as a military problem has got the end. Now maybe, and, and that's, you know, that's our hope for Trump. I, I'm not, I, I will give him a chance to prove me wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, because the, 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 the signals he's sending by selecting people like Waltz and Rubio or if you're a Russian or a Chinese, you're going, eh, no change. I mean, uh, both Rubio and Waltz are sort of curious choices, too, because uh, th these are not men known for their intellect. These are not men known for their strategic vision. You know, uh, they're, they're just sort of policy wonks that uh, will are good at repeating what the popular talking points at the moment are. And in particular, Rubio, man, he he's like, uh, he's like a flag in the wind. Whichever the way the wind's blowing, he'll go that direction. And well, and, and let's let's go ahead and look at that here because uh, that that was the other, and maybe even the biggest, uh, aside from the National Security Advisor uh, pick that's been made so far, uh, and it did catch a number of people by su some surprise. I won't say a lot because Rubio was expected to get something, uh, <clears throat> I guess, for his support that he'd given during the campaign. Uh, but but uh, take a look at this video here because this is uh, something specifically about Israel. But again, watch this from the perspective of saying, is this the guy that you want to be the face of American diplomacy? Are you filming it? Wait, I want you guys to get this. I want yeah. them to destroy every element of Hamas they can get their hands on. These people are vicious animals who did horrifying crimes. 
And I hope you guys post that. And that's what about the civilians that I are being Hamas. killed every day? Hamas should stop hiding behind civilians, putting civilians in the way. Hamas knew that this was going to lead to this. So Hamas has stopped building their military installations underneath hospitals. So you don't civilians. care that 15,000 have died? You don't care about the babies that are I being care. killed I think every it's day? Horrifying. I think yeah. it's terrible. And I think Hamas is 100% to blame. That's what I think. Make sure you post that, please. Well, they did. They certainly did post that. How does that uh, strike you as the Secretary of State, the lead diplom- diplomat of the United States of America? Well, in honor of uh, Rubio's Spanish heritage, there's a saying, el pez muere por la boca, the fish dies by its mouth. Well, out of his mouth, he just condemned himself. You know, it showed he, he's bought into the Israeli po- propaganda, or I should be more correctly, the Zionist propaganda, that, you know, Hamas killed babies and Hamas is building... Uh, mili- you hear that military installations under hospitals not run shred of evidence for that the only group right now in the Middle East that's killing women and children in the thousands it's not Hamas it's not Hezbollah it's not Iran it's Israel that's the definition of terrorism the shoe fits wear it uh, here's you know Rubio um, like I said, it's not a, he, he, he's, he's got sort of these ideological boxes ticked. Oh, I'm anti-communist. And then continues to treat Russia like it's communist without even understanding, you know, uh, hey, hey, Senator, uh, they got rid of communism. They're now a Christian country predominantly, but they've learned how to live in peace with Muslims. Maybe something we could go take a lesson from because we would have a lot to learn from the Russians. They're they're a country that embraces traditional values. They're a country that rejects uh, the the use of narcotic substances. So the Russia is actually sort of I described it as America in the 1950s, in terms of sort of its morals and attitudes, and and yet here's uh, Rubio because of his Cuban heritage locked into this this uh, old stereotype and refuses to recognize what has trans- changed. Same with Hamas and Hezbollah. Doesn't understand that the that the organizers of these are not just you know not crazed Muslims that hate Jews. No, they're they're people who fighting for what they believe is land that they're that they have a right to that is theirs historically. Now, and, and whether we agree that. with that or not, it's just understand where people are coming from, why they're doing what they're doing. 